Welcome, welcome. For today's video, I'm going to do Planet of the Apes. Planet of the Apes is an American science fiction film based on French author Pierre Boulez's 1963 novel Le Planet des Sings. Anywho, the film is directed by Franklin J. Schaffner and written by Michael Willis and Rod Sterling, who is best known for creating The Twilight Zone. And it was produced by Arthur P. Jacobs, who after buying the rights for adapting the novel, he spent over three years trying to persuade filmmakers to take on the project and he was able to do so by getting Charlton Heston to star in it and getting Rod Sterling to write it where Sterling included Cold War themes that were relevant at the time and fortunately for Jacobs 20th Century Fox produced it after liking the pitch and makeup tests and so, without further ado, let's check it out. The film begins with a captain's log made by astronaut George Taylor, played by Charlton Heston, who is traveling in a space voyage with three other astronauts. And he drops some philosophical shit. Does man, that marvel of the universe, that glorious paradox, still make war against his brother? Wow! The interesting thing about that is... <laughs> After that, it's bedtime for our space cowboy, and we get the opening credits. Then their spacecraft crashes into a lake on an unknown planet, and the crash awakens Taylor and the other astronauts Landon and Dodge from deep hibernation, all except one. Well... We're bound. Yeah, unfortunately, Stewart's hibernation chamber malfunctioned, causing her to age like milk. And before they abandon their sinking vessel, the three survivors read the ship's chronometer as November 25th, 3978, 2006 years after their departure in 1972. And Taylor estimates where exactly they are. We're some 320 light years from Earth on an unnamed planet. Is that close enough for you? Well, excuse me, princess. When they come ashore, the astronauts take stock of their situation. Time's wiped out everything you ever knew. It's all dust. Prove it. If we can't get back, it's still just a theory. A game theory! Thanks for watching. Then they begin their trek, and Landon stops to plant a tiny American flag before moving on. <laughs> yeah, so much for a small step for man. Anyways, the men travel through the desert wasteland, coming across some eerie scarecrow-like figures around them. And at the same time, some unseen figures move across the clifftops, watching their progress. And the astronauts discover some vegetation. And they later find a freshwater lake with lush vegetation. And they skinny dip. Ah! <laughs> and by the way, this film is rated G. Yeah, back in the late 60s, they didn't give a fuck about the ratings. They thought some ass cheeks were good for the kids. Anyways, while the men are swimming, their clothes are stolen and their stuff is smashed by primitive mute humans resembling cavemen. And there's a shit ton of them. We got it off at the wrong stop. Look on the bright side. This is the best they've got around here. In six months, we'll be running this planet. Well, too bad you don't have Dr. Stone to help you out. Soon after, a bizarre sound echoes over the area, causing the humans to book it. And the astronauts follow suit, and we see who exactly is after them. What? What the fuck? So yeah, a bunch of armed gorillas raid the cornfield. And unfortunately, the astronauts are caught in the crossfire. Literally, with Dosh getting killed and Landon being rendered unconscious in the chaos. And Taylor gets shot in the throat as he and the other humans are captured. And we see how the apes treat the humans. Smile. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, well. How the turntables... Then, Taylor and the other captured humans are taken to Ape City, 
Oh, and fun fact. In the original novel and the first draft of the script, the apes had more advanced technology with them using cars and helicopters. However, due to a low budget, the filmmakers had to go more primitive with the apes' technology. In addition, we get to see that this society of apes has a strict class system. With the gorillas being the military force and laborers, the orangutans overseeing government and religion, and chimpanzees as scientists and doctors. And the apes consider the primitive humans as vermin to be hunted and either killed outright, enslaved, or used in scientific experiments. And we meet two chimpanzees, an animal psychologist, Zira, played by Kim Hunter, and Surgeon Galen, played by Wright King, who saved Taylor's life, and Zira gives him a nickname. Well, Bright Eyes, is our throat feeling better? Taylor tries to communicate with him, but his throat injury renders him temporarily mute. He keeps trying to form words. You know what they say, human see, human do. It's ironic. And we meet Dr. Zayas. Dr. Zayas, Dr. Zayas. Dr. Zayas, Dr. Zayas, oh, Dr. Zayas. An orangutan minister of science who arrives at the lab to investigate the latest captured humans. Zira points out to Zayas that Taylor is trying to communicate with them, and she is convinced of his intelligence, but Dr. Zayas is not, and cautions Zira about her behavioral studies. That we can learn anything about the simian nature from a study of man is sheer nonsense. The sooner he is exterminated, the better. What an asshole! Then, Taylor is placed with a captive female, played by Linda Harrison, as a gift who he later names Nova. Later on, we meet Zira's fiancé and archaeologist, Dr. Cornelius, played by Roddy McDowell, who is trying to get approval from Dr. Zayas for an exhibition, and Zira tries to convince him of Taylor's intelligence, but to no avail because of the other humans fucking up his progress. However, Dr. Zayas does notice Taylor's writing. That is pretty sus. Taylor tries again to grab Zira's notebook and pencil, but gets his ass beaten by the guard, Julius, and he retrieves the stolen items. Luckily, Zira notices that Taylor has written a note that she understands, and she speaks to him one-to-one, -one, realizing that he is intelligent. Later on, Taylor tries to convince Zira and her fiancé, Cornelius, that he is as intelligent as they are by writing shit down and making a paper airplane. Dr. Zayas and their orangutan superiors are still unconvinced by this, seeing him as only an animal. And later on, we overhear what he plans to do to him. What's up, Lieutenant? We're taking number four over to surgery in five minutes. Have him ready. The vet's going to geld him. These orders come from Dr. Zayas himself. Well, we're fucked. And Taylor, having none of that shit, escapes and plays cat and mouse with the gorillas. He ends up in a museum where he finds Dodge's stuffed corpse on display. What? What the fuck? Then he is later recaptured in the progress. Take your sticking paws off me, you damn dirty ape! He can talk, 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 he can talk! I can see. So yeah, Taylor's back in the cage again, and he gets separated from Nova. It's a madhouse! A madhouse! No shit, Sherlock! Taylor then mentions how he had no attachments back on Earth like love and talks about the departed steward. He is then taken to a hearing to determine his origins, and Zira and Cornelius defend him in a court of law. Unfortunately, this trial is one-sided as fuck as the orangutans won't listen. Tell us, bright eyes, why do men have no soul? What is the proof that a divine spark exists in the simian brain? Huh? What an asshole! Then Taylor mentions his two colleagues, and he gets reunited with Landon. You did it. You cut up his brain, you bloody baboon! Shit just went from zero to 100 real fucking quick! 
Then Cornelius mentions that Taylor might be from an unknown human tribe in the Forbidden Zone, as well as there being evidence of a non-Simian culture that predates the apes culture. And the orangutans are having none of that shit, and they recreate the see no evil, hear no evil, and speak no evil pose. And by the way, that was actually Charlton Heston's idea. Later on, Dr. Zayas privately threatens to castrate and lobotomize Taylor for refusing to reveal his origins. All right, you can cut pieces out of me. You've got the power. But you do it out of fear. Remember that! Remember that! Because you're afraid of me! What are you afraid of, doctor? Well... We're fucked. Then we meet Zira's nephew, Lucius, who helps Taylor escape with Nova. And along with Zira and Cornelius, they take the humans to the Forbidden Zone, where Cornelius and Zira are intent to gather proof of an earlier civilization, which Cornelius discovered a year earlier, but it was declared as heresy. Meanwhile, Taylor focuses on proving that he comes from another planet. And when the group arrives at the cave, Taylor takes the time to shave. Why did you do that? Scrape off your hair! In my world, when I left it, only kids your age wore beard. It makes you look less intelligent. <laughs> Unfortunately, Dr. Zayas and his soldiers arrive, and Taylor holds him off by threatening to shoot Dr. Zayas, who agrees to enter the cave to disprove their theories. Inside, Cornelius displays remnants of a technologically advanced human society, predating Simian history. Taylor identifies the artifacts as dentures, eyeglasses, and a heart valve, and to the ape's astonishment, a talking human doll. Dr. Zayas, would an ape make a human doll that talks? Wow, I can't find a flaw in his logic. And Dr. Zayas is just hating as always, and we get a shootout. Ha! <laughs> get him! Yeah! Ha! Shiz, man! Then Taylor holds Dr. Zayas as a hostage, and Dr. Zayas admits that he has always known about an ancient human civilization. Furthermore, he drops some knowledge about man from his scrolls. Beware the beast man, for he is the devil's pawn, for he is the harbinger of death. Wow, I can't find a flaw in his logic. Taylor then gets a horse and supplies to search for answers, but not before saying farewell to his ape friends. Doctor, I'd like to kiss you goodbye. All right, but you're so damned ugly. Yeah, now you know where this came from. I'd like to kiss you, monkey man. All right, but you're so darn ugly. Then Dr. Z has dropped some more facts about man. From the evidence, I believe his... Wisdom must walk hand in hand with his idiocy. He must be a warlike creature who gives battle to everything around him, even himself. Wow, I can't find a flaw in his logic. Before Taylor leaves, Dr. Zayas warns him against finding an answer which he will regret soon enough. And after Taylor and Nova leave, Dr. Zayas has the cave sealed off to destroy the evidence while charging Zira, Cornelius, and Lucius with heresy. What about the future? I may just have saved it for you. What will he find out there, Doctor? His destiny. Huge steaming ball of foreshadowing. So Taylor and Nova follow the shoreline on horseback, and we get to the most iconic scene of this film and cinematic history. You maniac! You blew it up! God damn you all to hell! And of course, I can't show the whole thing because of copyright, but luckily I found a good substitute. Oh my god! was wrong it was earth all along and that was planet of the apes the film was a huge commercial and box office hit it was also groundbreaking for his prosthetic makeup techniques by artist john chambers and it was nominated for best costume design and best original score at the 41st academy awards and chambers winning an honorary academy award and in 2001 Planet of the Apes was selected for preservation in the United States Film Registry by the Library of Congress. And with its success, the Planet of the Apes had four sequels as well as a television series, an animated series, comic books, and various merchandising. In particular, Roddy McDowell will have a long-running relationship with the franchise, appearing in four of the original five films, with the exception of the second one, Beneath the Planet of the Apes. 
and he also appears in the television series. The film would later get a remake by Tim Burton in 2001, and later a reboot series, beginning with Rise of the Planet of the Apes in 2011. So with all that out of the way, so what do I think of the film? And the film is fucking amazing. You can see why it is considered as one of the greatest sci-fi films ever made. The settings, sets, and costumes are amazing despite the low budget. And the makeup, while crude by today's standards, still pretty good. And Jerry Goldsmith's score is incredible in making the planet seem more alien. And I enjoyed the performances from the actors, with Charlton Heston as Taylor and Maurice Evans as Dr. Zayas being standouts, especially when they're at each other's throats. Also, you can see elements of the Cold War in the ending, and as well as the counterculture with Lucius being a representative of that, as he disapproves of the establishment holding their society from advancing. I also enjoy the dialogue like the philosophical speech on man, and the funny comebacks like this one. He keeps trying to form words. You know what they say, human see, human do. So overall, this is a very great film, and I would highly recommend it. And you can see why it's been parodied and referenced multiple times in pop culture. So I would give this film 5 out of 5 apes. And that was the video. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more videos just like this. Oh, and if you like my work, support the channel at Ko-Fi. There you can help support me in producing these videos, and have your name in the credits. And you can also drop suggestions on any future projects you want me to check out. And and if you do support me, I thank you very much, and I appreciate it very much. So yeah, that was the video. Stay safe, and goodbye. See from chimpanzee to chimpanzee.